wish you a happy voyage home. Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Rule of Waves 2 as Germany, episode number 79. Possibly the last episode. Um, I'm going to see how things play out, but uh, just thought I'd bring in a little bit of uh, music to <laughs> break up. <laughs> the first 79 episodes have <laughs> needed a break, and uh, I decided to bring that in. I just really enjoy listening to that kind of music, and uh, I've always wanted to bring it in more. Uh, that I'm not going. That's not edited in. I literally just played that for you, and I'm continuing the episode. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. You don't want to get copyright strikes, so I found some stuff which is open. So I mean, yeah, available to the public. You can put it on your video, and no attribution required or anything, which I guess is almost anything from the United States government. It's supposed to be that way. That that stuff is not copyright. Um, the government stuff is all supposed to be publicly available. Anyway, uh, here we are. We're back. I know that, by the way, again, that's not nationally relevant. It's the <laughs> United States Marine uh, Band. I forget the name of it, but they're the ones who are playing that. Not the Germany one, but I don't know any of the German songs. Or I don't know if the German songs will get me into trouble with copyright stuff. So, Anyway, and this might be the last episode. We're going to continue on and just... We're only looking to finish... Um, oh man, Russia's just really provoking us too, it's funny. Uh, we're only looking to finish the design of the Torturpits, and then get the Clausewitz out here, and then the big clim climactic, I'm sure everyone can tell what's going to happen, is there's, there's tensions brewing. Um, yeah, go ahead. We're now fast friends with the British. Tensions brewing between the imperial slash fascist movement in Germany, which is kind of like the conservative one. And then there's this new progressive movement. Uh, you know, nobody in the Navy isn't like spearheading these things. So we can say that Terturpitz, his counterpart on the, the imperial side, neither of these are really spearheading this movement. They're just taking sides. So it's the, the fallout. As yeah, I mean, most of the time, it's not the Navy people who are starting uprisings, right? But they just choose their side, and the forces fall into line accordingly. So we're just going to wait uh, until we get this Torturpitz. We're getting all these Kaiser, all these things back. Uh, we'll sell anything to anybody at this point, because it is the end. I mean, basically, just to dismiss the pop-up. Have I gotten you guys? 1944, 44. Slickings are a little bit outdated. Valkyries are surely outdated. Let's get these guys thrown on a new thing of paint. I don't know if anything's going to happen with the... Oh, yeah, we actually... Oh, interesting. And we don't want the dual purpose on that. Oh, wow, the autoloaders are quite expensive. Is it possible to get that? Is it worth it? I think it's... Hmm... I think it's worth it. It means that we're going to have to drop down the number of torpedoes that this thing can launch, which was not high to begin with. First of all, we won't need the mines anymore. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop this down. Didn't help that much. We're going to have to probably drop down the number of turrets. Although this was like one of the best things about the Valkyrie was it's a really impressive secondary. So let's strongly consider what we're doing here. Like maybe the number of AA directors going dead. Eh, it's not, it's just not going to help very much. Autoloaders would be really nice, but you know, we might, we just might not be able to do them on the Valkyries. Let's see what happens with the Stachel Swines, which also need a refit. I mean, I, I guess they don't need a refit, but certainly would benefit from one. Yeah, so only the 6-inch guns are available for auto-loading. Or our 8-inch is also available. I'm trying to remember what ships historically had auto-loading. I thought that auto-loading could be bigger than 6 inches. Yeah, this ship was a little bit disappointing, Special Swine, just as a, a critique of her after everything <clears throat> just because she didn't end up having a 
as much dual purpose firepower as we were expecting. Okay, anyway, for the remaining tonnage, we can get one extra medium. That's okay. That sounds good to me. So, yeah, this one still has to stop to launch, but that's okay. We haven't really been taking advantage of that, so we'll get them all this. Just get them all patched up. Still left with these Valkyries. What are we going to do with them? It's definitely time to rebuild them. Definitely do not want the dual purpose because that would not be complimentary. Man, it's so expensive. Not in terms of money, but in terms of space. I think it's like a 10% rate of fire bonus, so it is, it, it's nice. Okay, the Valkyrie does have torpedo reloads, but those don't seem to be working. So let's just drop it like this. I, I have not seen those work. In fact, if we drop down to two, I think we will easily have it. So this is obviously a ship which has gone away from the torpedoes and moved just fully in terms of air defense. And I, I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah. So... We can even get more ammunition. Why not? Uh, we can also get light guns. I mean, these are this ship is probably not it's probably not necessary for it to defend itself. But yeah, we can do that. Just get two light anti-aircraft. I mean, what else are you going to do with it, right? You should use all that space. So 31 knots. I mean, it's a very fast ship. The Valkyries are quite good. Oh, that's right. We get even more out of it. Um, we'll drop this down to zero because honestly, mines are not important, but. A little bit of anti-aircraft is. I was thinking about just putting in light anti-light AA because let's see this last one really. Yeah, seven and one versus eight and zero, or nine and zero. Let's go with the nine. It's fine. Uh, I want to just stack it up. Hopefully, to offer a little bit more dispersion. All right. So that's the Valkyrie. Did we get the electro-optical on the... Yeah, I think we did. Okay, very good. Now the slick things don't need to be refit. And I think that's all good. Okay, so moving on. We are waiting for the design, which should be coming in now. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, we want to rework this design. Because I got some interesting feedback from people showing, telling me that basically magazine boxes... Well, a lot of people were saying the magazine box is not going to be good. The way I view it is this. First of all, I think that the number of guns we have, the 12, 7 inch, 17 inch guns, is awesome. Just awesome. I think that the turret armor we have is great. Uh, it's good enough, I would say. I mean, we're not armored against ourselves. <laughs> but... I mean, okay, so this is showing the 20 inch guns, but so 17 inch turrets are going to stop starting at 12,000. That is pretty good. 17 inch turrets stop, uh, start at 17,000. And the deck of 8 inches is going to keep us penetrate. 17 inch guns actually never penetrate 8 inches. So our turrets are immune to deck fi to plunging fire, and they can only be penetrated at less than 12,000 range. Um, from 17 inch quality one guns. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm not, I'm, I'm basically just really satisfied with the, the turret armor. In fact, seeing that, the only reason why, I, I guess we should even make this slightly less because what we see is 6.5 is already enough. I like to have half an inch more on turret top because I think turret top is less effective than deck. However, seven seems to be more than enough. So we save ourselves a little bit of weight. What is that put into? I mean, ideally it'd be put into more belt because the belt is obviously the one thing where we're being penetrated. Now people were talking about if you're only doing magazine box and 10 inches of belt everywhere that's not magazine, um, you're gonna have a lot of penetrating hits. I think this is true, but I don't think that it matters because look at what we have to go up to. So 10 inches is gonna penetrate 
uh, if they're at let's say 15,000 in order to, to make our 10 inches better we have to let's say even at 20,000 to go up to to stop penetration at 20,000 we have to go up to 12 inches which means that by the way our magazine can be penetrated at that distance right now the good news is our magazine can't be penetrated unless they're really point blank and probably if they got that close we already killed them um, so this prevents the ship from being destroyed from magazine detonation which I'm gonna say a 71,000 ton ship pretty much the only thing which is gonna destroy it is a critical failure it's like the Death Star only a critical failure yeah it can be chipped away at and I think we can even sink an enemy 71,000 ton ship by doing you know damage over time tons of damage over time however you're very unlikely I think to sink this kind of ship unless um, yeah I mean unless <laughs> you have some kind of critical hits so even slow penetrations I mean just imagine our ships at 45,000 tons we're taking those hits the Sturmbringers are taking these penetrating hits all the time and they just shrug it off because the Sturmbringers I guess they're not what was their armor at I'll go back to this design uh, or wait do I did I just mess that up I think I did We'll, we'll redo it. The Sturmbringer has armor of 12 inches. So even at 12 inches, we suffer a lot of penetrating hits. And that's the thing, like in order to armor against, um, in order to armor against these guys, we just, we'll have to, it, we'll have to have just such high amounts of armor. I just, I don't see it as a practical solution to try to get, I mean, okay, let's look at what we can get without magazine box. Let's, this is like the fairest way of comparing, is just seeing what we can get. Oh yeah. In a move which doesn't make any sense at all, we cannot even get 10 inches everywhere. If we do ma but if we do magazine box, we can get 10 inches everywhere except for the magazine, which we get more. So it just almost doesn't, I, I mean, based on that, I don't know if there's a, honestly, that it seems like a bug. <laughs> I, I don't understand that <laughs> but seeing that just strongly ex just like extremely motivates me to get 20 uh, to put to the magazine box on and we'll get the max for it um, I would I would always like to get more deck armor four and a half inches everywhere is slightly less than what our Sturmbringers are bringing to the table they have well they have five inches and this would be four and a half everywhere that's not nine oh uh, in the same area not mind you the extended is still not armored but in the uh the important areas four and a half inches of belt and then nine inches of belt over i think that's pretty good i think we're still going to get deck penetrations and i would really like to get this up to 10 i would just be ecstatic to get it up to 10 but the good news is again no critical hits oh yeah we can lower this down though how much is that? I mean, this is just going to be way too much, even to get 9.5. And I don't know how the dividing rounding goes. So I'm I'm not going to, just in case it's uh, pessimistic rounding and 9.5 rounds down to 4.5, I'm not going to up it to the, the even, the sorry, the odd amounts, the ones that won't divide by two evenly. So, so we have 250 more. I don't think we need any more rounds per gun. We're pretty much at the limit of what we can do in terms of um, light anti—I mean anti-aircraft stuff. In a weird way, we could almost up armor the, <laughs> the conning tower. <laughs> um. Well, let's do, I mean, I almost think there's not a better solution than to just keep it on the turret top. Well, we can go to 7.5 here and then maybe up our light anti-aircraft. Yeah, I guess we can add some torpedoes.
Can we get three? I don't think so. Maybe? Huh, yeah. By lowering our crowning tower even more. No, let's not do that. Let's decrease. Just get two tubes per side. And then we can up our conning tower to... I kind of would rather just get more conning tower. You know what? No, I don't. I don't care. Actually, the reason why is penetrating hits are going to penetrate 13 inches already. Actually, I mean, I'm, that's not necessarily true. Well, this is a true Tortuga episode. For the last episode, we are going to spend, like, forever just designing, redesigning, unfortunately, this darn ship. So 18,000 yards is all they have to be away to be penetrating. Uh, yeah. Does it work out to something? I mean... No, I don't... I don't like it. I, you know, part of the reason why I don't like it is because if it's, if this is a ship named after Admiral Tortuga, it's kind of like in his, it's the way he does things that he, yeah, and then with those, we actually have to drop this down, which is where, where that extra weight will come, and that's perfect. Okay, good. So we have three torpedoes per side as a mechanism of finishing off, you know, basically finishing off a, a ship. Um... <clears throat> I don't know, it might actually be better to drop that since they're not gonna be very useful and just use instead like, like the anti-aircraft. Okay, yeah, you're right. I, I've talked myself back out of it yet again. I'd rather have the conning tower. Um, yeah, and then that's it. We'll just leave it. We'll leave everything the way it is. Okay, so we'll save this. This is the new, is it gonna take Four months it will. That's fine. We'll just do it. Okay. Modern lightweight materials. <laughs> that whole weight savings would have been nice. A little bit earlier. And then the last thing I think we want to design is even maybe one more light cruiser. I don't think it'll be it will be able to get into the game. Oh, we have two ox offs. Let me fix that. Wow, look at all that stuff. I might have to redesign it again. Airborne radar. Okay, so let's, what was I wanted to do? I had the Oxhoffs. Should have two. So let's pretend to build a CL. So the Hamburg is gonna be this other one. I feel like we already had a ship named the Hamburg, but that's fine. Okay, good. So we got rid of the double, the duplicate Oxhoffs, finally. I think we're just gonna push on. I, I will, I think I will rework the design and I won't, okay, Hawkish government come power in Russia. I know I could fight another war, but I just don't want to. This is an interesting report. Our scientists report that they are currently baffled by the problems of torpedo protection too. But we already have torpedo protection four. New dive bomber prototypes are ready. It's always nice when they, when they give us four options. This one jumps out right away just in the statistics here. It's also the second fastest. And the second fastest was this as well. The alternative is to go for 99, 699, or we have 61010. The range on this one is significantly higher. I think it's worth doing even. First of all, it's faster, which I like. And second of all, its range is, yeah, the second one actually is, has very low range. In fact, lower than our current one. <laughs> well, I'll be, we actually did lose, huh? <laughs> we actually did get worse in terms of the bomb. Wow. Okay, so it actually does matter. That is really nice. A little bit of extra toughness. Okay, not it's not that much better. I mean, it can carry a heavier bomb, heavier bomb than our dive bombers. Riddle me how that works. Let's just immediately get another one. So we will have to dive bomber. We will have to go for bomb load and 
Let's go for speed second. Whatever. Not a big deal. Okay. We don't... Okay, so let's rework the design. Look at that. 391. Pfft. More ammunition. Because what else are we going to do? Take it up to 15. I like it. I will change no more. I will change no more forever. <laughs> yeah, it's good now. We're at the limit. Conning tower is an even number, which I always prefer for some stupid reason. Okay. Um, let's examine the ship, even if it risks exposing. Yeah. Or we could offer sincere apologies to navigational errors and offer. Let's. This is a new. We're turning over a new leaf, and this is probably not what the Kaiser wants us to be doing. We're gonna go to the build screen, and we're gonna get two of these. First, that, and second, I don't even know if we can, we can probably afford it. One second, I have to black out. Because I have this in the wrong spot, and we're all good. Um, there we go. Had to find my sheet. Okay, there they are. Two Klauswitzes, two Gross Admiral Torturpitzes, and we're good. And these are gonna take a very, very long time. I guess that neither of them are actually going to call an internet, oh. Okay, no concrete results. Okay, good. It actually worked. Ah, uh, no, the spying I don't like. So am I going to be able to get, I don't think we're going to be able to get the, uh, the last, <laughs> the last two ships in the game. This, like the game doesn't know that we're trying to avoid war. <laughs> okay, so Great Britain has granted independence to, hey, wait, another round, new doubt, dude, okay. Well, France has the lowest tensions right now, so we'll just choose them. Wow, reduces weight of diesel engines by 10%. That's quite good. We don't have any diesel engine ships, but still pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's say May 1946, we'll give it a couple more months. How many more months? We need 11 more months to be able to get at least our our, crew, our uh, carriers out. Yeah, strong diplomatic note to the Italians. I don't know what, uh, so the, we should have two dive bombers. Everything else should be fine. Two dive bombers, and that's it. I don't even know, what, I think I might obsolete this one. Well, let's see which one is actually worse in terms of reliability. If this one is good reliability, I will probably just allow it. I mean, we're gonna get a new design very quickly here anyway, so. Oh, cool, we have blind fire now. Are we interested in buying this? Yes, yes! Yes! Oh, yes, 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 and yes! Fantastic, this is actually what we needed. So, absolutely, we'll buy that. That solves our problem. The government has decided to grant independence to Tanganyika. Eh, we'll deny any involvement. Eh, it doesn't really matter. The U.S. doesn't matter, so... Forward firing motor mortars. We finally got those. Jeez, 1946. Okay, the new prototypes are done, and we have 1,400 back on the table. 6118 sounds pretty good. Has incredible range. It's a little bit slower. I'd probably prefer this one because it's comparable. Comparable, and well, it's just only so minutely faster. 
Just depends on if I want it faster or do I want it better with the stats here. I think a firepower of eight means it could actually shoot down enemy fighters. So I do like this. I think we'll go with this one. We have like a gluttony of dive bombers to choose from. It's faster. It has high, oh, yep. It just is in every way better. So let's go to our aircraft list and start making some of these obsolete. We're gonna make everything obsolete from the old dive bombers, including the 1,000 pound bomb one because we have both of these which are really quite good and I actually don't really care which one. Actually, the bottom one has better range. It has, okay, it's better in every way. So we'll obsolete this one. I, actually, I'd, let's not obsolete it. Let's just make sure the reliability for both is comparable. Um, we have two fighters now and the bottom one is just in every way except for toughness and bomb load. And it's average, so let's leave both of those as well. We can also request a new aircraft. Kind of feel like medium bomber has been neglected for a while. Let's go with bomb load and speed. I actually think those are still appropriate. Um, yeah, let's go with bomb load and speed. Probably should have gone with bomb load and... Okay, this is it. This is the event which breaks us. The Kaiser has made a foreign policy goth. You are asked to smooth things over by the naval secretary. I would never presume to undercut the authority of the Kaiser. I agree to make a bland statement diluting the effects of the remark made by the Kaiser or divert attention by making a critical statement about somebody else. Terturbitz is a man of... Yeah, Terturbitz is a man of um, integrity. He's not going to undercut the authority of the Kaiser, but this secretly has big ramifications. And you know what? Let's not wait any longer. Let's get to it. Let's say that September 1946 is when the government splinters. So the final battle, if we can wait seven more months, I can get the Clausewitz is in, but I actually don't know if we can wait that long. Let's just go ahead and do it. It's going to be a war between the German forces, and it's going to be facilitated by this pick force. So I don't know if you guys already guessed this, but this is really going to allow us to fight a civil war. I'm going to choose our forces, and then I will choose the enemy forces. So it's kind of, I want to kind of mix it up. I, I don't, the thing is, I don't know everybody's, uh, who everyone on this list is. I will add to the friendly forces. Uh, let's get a new division. Uh, it's nice as well that I can make my own divisions. So I know that the um, Schlockschiff, I think this is uh, Seawolf or Sea Bass. I think that's Sea Bass. Anyways, uh, I know that's a, that's a person who I would want on my friendly team. I would trust his captain. Out of the other ones, I don't know if I would trust. We probably should divide this two and two. Or... Well, I'm going to go ahead and just time dilate this a little bit, speed up the clip so you don't have to see me try to select every single person. This is 10 times speed, so it was going on for, it's only going to be a minute for us, but it, it would have been 10 minutes uh, if I let it play out. Um, crucial points, I'm trying to give myself the people who I recognize, the ones who have role played. If you uh, don't, if you're on the wrong team, if you're on the Imperial side, unless you want to role play that way, just role play it that your captain was promoted at some point and you're a division commander or something like this. Uh, other thing is I tried to keep the ships pretty balanced. I end up going with exactly even number of battleships on each side, but they actually get one extra Sturmbringer and I get an extra Foyer Draka, which is definitely a, a win for them. However, conversely, I do give myself one more carrier because I felt like that was a little bit more like what Torture Bits Jr. Would, would prioritize. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this uh, sped up video, so back to the fight. Two, three, four, five. All right. It's going to be at night with good weather at classic range. Let the, let the battle begin. Yes. Okay, well, good luck to us. We'll pick this one up in the next episode, but...
I think we're going to win, obviously. I mean, we, we have a strong advantage in terms of carriers. We'll see how it goes, though. So I'm going to save this one. I know that it's been a... I might have clipped out and just kind of... Uh, I don't know if I have edited this because it was, you know, took so long to get the battle going. But, yeah, I probably just did something. Anyway, uh, we'll fight this battle, the battle for Germany. Is it going to be more progressive government, more democratic? Will the people have a voice? Or is it going to take a shift in the other direction, a little bit more centralized in power of the government, more autocratic? We'll see. Until then, thanks for watching, and take care.